Good morning YouTube, I'm Chucky2009 and I'm really happy to be making you guys this video because this is a project I've wanted to do literally since about 2009 or so and I'm just now scraping up the money and the time and the resources to put together. So uh, we're going to be building a big flatbed trailer basically. Uh, this thing's going to be 20 feet long not counting tongue, and it's gonna be eight feet wide, it's gonna have two axles, it's gonna have brakes, and uh, hopefully it's gonna be somewhat awesome. <sighs> yeah, this is gonna be pretty good. So my assistant and I already went and picked up the deal, and now we're just trying to get this frame laid out and welded into place today. And I think this project's gonna go by pretty quickly. It's obviously a very sizable project. This physically is probably the biggest project I've ever done. I think it's even a little bit larger footprint than my V8 tractor build. But it's really not that complicated. And, uh, and well, the parts are large, there's actually not very many of them. And, uh, and everything should go together in a pretty systematic fashion here. So, what do I want this trailer to be? I want it to be very sturdy. I'm sure this is gonna be a fun build, but I want this to be a trailer that'll last me the rest of my life and probably my eventual kids' lives because uh, I don't really wanna to have to do it twice. I have borrowed, rented, and hired out pretty much all of my serious moving needs for all these years. And it's cost a lot of money and pretty much all the trailers I've used really aren't very good. And my experience as a welder has scared me away from just going to the store and buying a store-bought trailer because in my opinion, compared to what we're gonna build, those are very flimsy. They're built from subpar materials to hit a price point, and they're built by people that, instead of being trained, competent, somewhat professionals, are people that make like a dollar an hour over minimum wage and just don't care. Not trying to be offensive, your mileage may vary, but I've worked on so many trailers in my life, seen so much sketchy, halfway baked stuff, I know I want to build my own. So, that's what I did. Between the steel and the two uh, American-made Rockwell axles I bought, and brakes and springs and all that little crap, I meant this about three grand in materials, and hopefully between my assistant and myself, we can build it in a few days, at most, hopefully less. So, let's get started. All right, YouTube, so as you can see, Andre and I have gotten this laid out, and it is to within an eighth of an inch of square measured lengthwise, so it's actually more square than that since that's a triangulated eighth of an inch, so really it's to within like a tenth of an inch of square, somewhere around there, I don't know because I suck a map. But either way, I feel like this is going to work really well, and the way we've designed this, we're going to run a cross member, we have eight cross members for the top of this, right? And they're going to lay on what you see here on top of it, and we're going to put them four feet apart so that that way, um, you know, there's an edge for each edge of those uh, four by eight diamond tread sheets. And then we're going to put another cross member in the middle of the sheets. So there's only going to be two feet unsupported uh, by anything running underneath it of that diamond tread steel. And that stuff's an eighth of an inch thick, so it's some pretty sturdy stuff. And um, so I really think that, hang on, yeah, all right. It moves. We're good. So I really think that this is going to be pretty much perfect and extremely well suited to what we're doing. So Andre is just working on uh, marking out where these cross members are going to go. Then we're going to start welding them in place. Now I'm glad that things are moving pretty smoothly on this. I want to have a nice solid flat bed that hopefully our wheels and tires will fit firmly underneath so this isn't going to look anything like a conventional car hauler or utility trailer type thing which you may have seen. And um, this is a design that I really like. It's something I've wanted to do for some time and I still think it's cool that we managed to fit a trailer on top of another trailer with some assembly required of course. But luckily things seem to be moving along very well. So 
So here we are at the end of day one, and uh, this is what we've done so far. We got our steel unloaded, somewhat organized, cut to length, and laid out. Now laying this out really wasn't that bad because these uh, two by six pieces of box tube here, which form our sides, came in a 20 foot section. And since I needed a 20 foot trailer, we didn't actually have to cut them. We just lined them up, made sure they were parallel, stuck the ends on there, made sure everything uh, lined up right was square, and then added the cross members. And so hopefully we can keep making tracks on this, which is good because as much as I'm enjoying this, I really want to see it. All right, so today's plan on the trailer is to get both axles and the tongue hopefully installed. And I want this to be a flatbed trailer, obviously. That's kind of the whole point of the entire build. And so what that means is that we need to do something to essentially raise the deck of the trailer and therefore lower where the axles go so that way our wheels have room to clear and when we really put a big load on this thing and they sink down, they don't rub up against the bottom of the deck. So, took some measurements last night, figured out what we need to do that. Uh, if we uh, just took our spring brackets, our shackles and everything and weld them to the bottom of this piece of 2x6 tube which makes up the uh, main section of the frame here, then we would need about four more inches of space up top. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of 2x4 steel tube, we're going to weld it down here, and then we're going to weld the, uh, the springs, basically the brackets for them, underneath that. So. Hopefully, we'll uh, have a nice flatbed trailer. Now, it should work if we do this, but we are gonna have to trim down the cross members where the tires go. As you can see, this one's already been shortened, and so we're gonna have to do that with probably two more of these, and uh, we might have to, because of this, add a little bit of reinforcement on the deck, but that won't be a big problem. We'll take it as it comes. So, let's start getting these uh, positioned. All right, so the basic plan here is we're gonna mark out the center line on this piece of four inch tube, and then we're gonna mark out the center line on the piece of six inch tube which is down there and while we were at it we decided that we were going to start welding on the side rails to this trailer right about now i know it's kind of random but we wanted to get them out of our way and this seemed like a logical time to do that so i've decided that i'm going to put some stake pockets on the sides and front and probably the back of this trailer I don't think I'll ever actually put wooden sides on it, you know, like the stake sides or whatever. I don't think I'll ever really have a reason to do that, but if the need should arise, I want to know that it's there. And uh, once I had those in place, it was basically just time to start getting this all nice and welded out. So initially we had planned on trimming those cross members that go out past the, uh, the sides of the frame there, directly above where the wheels go, so that way we'll have a little bit more clearance for those tires. But after doing a bunch of research on the internet about underslung versus overslung axles, we figured out we can mount the axles to the underside of the leaf springs with no sacrifice in strength, performance, or ride quality and uh, gain about another two inches of clearance, which is good because uh, quite frankly, we need it. This is gonna be a tall trailer. That's just how I like so it. I gotta tell you guys, I absolutely love how this design with this piece of four inch rectangular tube has worked out because I'll try and scoot out of the way here a little bit. If you look at this, not only does this piece of tube give us the extra height we need, but it also works to evenly distribute some of the forces coming up from these axles as we drive over bumps and whatnot through a wider section of the trailer's main frame than if the axles were welded right to this piece of two by six. It's kind of like, you know, if you ever weld a large D-ring to something, you don't actually just weld the D-ring to it. You put a little plate of steel on top of your base metal and then you weld the D-ring on top of the plate of steel. It's the same exact thing. It just works to distribute the uh, forces a little bit better. And um, I was a little leery about this part, but I think it's turned out very, very well. I'm extremely happy with how that went. So now let's go ahead and get out our jack and we're gonna stick some wheels on this thing. And then keep rolling right on into when we have to stick a tongue on the front of this glorious creation. So, as you can see here, I'm using that uh, high lift jack I talked about several videos ago, probably by the time this thing posts, and it seems to be working great. And uh, basically, I just used that to hold up one side of the trailer at a time with the other supported by various blocks and jack stands, of course, like six different ways, because I really don't want to drop this thing, <laughs> you can imagine. Then I installed these wheels, and uh, basically from here, it was time for that tongue We build. are moving right along on this trailer build. As you can see, it is now time for us to start working on the tongue of this trailer, and we've got these pieces of two by six 
pretty dang heavy wall rectangular tube here to work with and I'm just in the process of getting them all laid out so we can start cutting and notching them and the steel well, it might be quite stout. It's uh, pretty far from being clean. As you can see here, we've got a fairly thick coating of mill scale on it, plus lots of oil and grease from the factory. And since I live here in Texas, it's been rained on quite a bit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, once we got these cut out, we simply tossed the individual rails themselves up on my workbench and got out some chains and a chain binder, which uh, I haven't used too, too much for fabrication purposes in the past. But uh, even though the steel is a pretty tough material, it's actually pretty easy to manipulate with the right tools, as you all know. And once I had these pieces welded out in a way that I deemed to be acceptable, I figured it was about time we start attaching these to our proverbial elephant hauling frame of doom. So we started positioning these using the tried and true welders tools and tricks of the trade, which of course include a scrap metal straight edge, various speed squares and tape measures, profanity in at least two different languages, as well as some wooden blocks and my favorite, the floor jack. So we were able to figure out where our sections needed to meet up, so I simply cut the first tube there, and then once we had that out of the way, we started in on attaching the second one. So uh, for the record, this jack can hold 7,000 pounds and it cost me a little more than 55 bucks from a local trailer supply place. Also, uh, speaking of such things, I've learned by cutting broken jacks off of trailers in the past that it really is best to put a steel plate in between the jack and the tongue. That way, if this jack ever breaks or wears out or whatever, I won't be cutting or grinding or gouging or whatever against the trailer tongue itself and potentially, you know, marking it up and, and potentially even weakening it. Uh, you know, at least there's some chance of that. I don't know how much, but uh, it's always there. And this way, I'll simply be digging into this spacer made from scrap metal, and uh, that's not really anything worth worrying about too, too much. So that's uh, just a couple things I've picked up throughout the years that I wanted to pass on to you guys. So. Uh, from there, moving forward, I attached the pencil ring to the plate which runs between these two tongue sections with multiple layers of 7018 because, uh, well, quite frankly, I probably wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I had done this otherwise. And as soon as I got through with all that, then I started cutting out some parts to cap the ends of our various pieces of square and rectangular tubing, purely for aesthetic reasons, and I also cut out parts for a spare tire mount that will go on the cross member that we still have to uh, run between those tongue sections. And I really wanted to CNC cut these out, but uh, since I know people will ask, our CNC table was having some technical difficulties the day I filmed this, so I had to do them by hand. And as much as I really, really wanted to get the uh, gratification from seeing my hard work installed on the trailer. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that because about this time, a buddy of mine stopped by in his brand new, to him, service truck with a crane on the back of it, which we needed to easily position those sheets of diamond tread plate on the back of this thing because ain't no Chucky 2009 got time for replacing wooden T-Railer next. All right, let's get to work on that. All right, guys, I'm just gonna add this in here for free while we've got this uh, excellent shot of Mechanic Steve's dashboard. Okay, this is something we were talking about in the uh, Telegram group recently, and it's very relevant to this project, so I'm just gonna tell you guys. All right, I would not build a trailer with a steel deck now under pretty much any circumstances. All right, first and foremost, this series was filmed like, like eight years ago or something, seven, eight years ago, whatever. And uh, at the time, these 4x8 diamond tread sheets cost like like 120 bucks or something, I think, which is insanely cheap compared to what they are now. I, I don't know. I don't even want to know exactly. All right, but to state the obvious, the cost of pretty much everything has gone up drastically since this was filmed. Uh, and then the other thing that I've learned over the years, owning a bunch of trailers, building a bunch of trailers, and hauling a bunch of trailers 
is that trailers with steel decks definitely fall under the category of things which really should be awesome, but somehow they just aren't, all right? I, I don't know if they're really that much heavier, uh, but they feel a lot heavier, they feel a lot clunkier, they're banging around back there. If something falls on it, then you're stuck with a dent forever, whereas with a wooden deck, uh, which now is a lot cheaper, at least with current prices, with a wooden deck, you can just replace one board and it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, long story short, if I was building a trailer right now, it would definitely have a wooden deck on it. But like I said, this was years ago. And uh, all right, let's see what's uh, let's see what's going on here. So I've been working on this trailer for some time now, and in this video, we're going to be painting it and trying to get it ready for its road test, since I have to take it to get it registered and inspected today anyway. Now, this thing was uh, actually fairly dirty, so to speak, when it rolled out of the shop. This is made, of course, entirely from hot rolled steel, which comes from the factories we all know covered in oil, and then there's all that smoky residue and, and mess that comes from the actual welding itself. And, uh, you know, I was pretty friggin' positive that I bought some property greaser for this, but I couldn't find it for the life of me, so I just used some really good quality soap that I happened to have in order to clean this thing and to get it to the point that I could run my finger across it and not have any oily or other residue come off the trailer. And as soon as it was clean on the outside, I climbed up underneath this trailer with a jug of acetone and a bunch of paper towels and cleaned the oil and mess off the inside of the frame rails. And all of those cross members, which of course royally sucked, definitely wasn't a fun job, but that's just the price we gotta pay for a fully painted trailer in which the paint won't just fall off in a year from now. And uh, oh, naturally, uh, as soon as I was done washing this trailer, I went to my shop looking for something else and of course, I found the degreaser that I couldn't track down earlier, but isn't that just how it goes? Now, uh, this is yet another reason why I wanted to go ahead and build my own trailer instead of buying a store-bought one or a used one or whatever. Store-bought trailers, in my experience, are notorious for typically having a, uh, being generous, a second-rate finish. They usually don't clean them at all, they don't prime them, they just uh, hose them down with one thick, gloopy coat of cheap paint and call it a day. And uh, anyway, once the entire friggin' trailer was clean, this kind of reminded me of washing your truck, you know? You, you never actually realize how big a vehicle is until you have to towel dry it or wax it or something along those lines. It's kind of like this. I didn't really realize <laughs> how much surface area this dang trailer had until I had to scrub the thing down by hand. But uh, now, the color I'll be using here is Rust-Oleum's Hunter Green, and I chose this color for a number of reasons. Mainly, I don't really want a black trailer since that's what everyone and their brother has, and also, I'm subscribed to a number of German and Dutch YouTubers, and every time, literally every single time, I see a flatbed trailer in the background of their videos, you know, if they're uh, if they're filming on something on the street or they're at a business or whatever, doing a vlog or, or what have you, the trailer itself is always a uh, really nice shade of green, and to be honest, I'm not 100% sure why this is. Uh, maybe that's some kind of like required color over there for, for that kind of trailer or something. Or maybe it's just what the market prefers, kind of like how black trailers are just the thing here and some red ones. Those are definitely the two most common colors I've seen. Now that's another thing. I am no automotive, super awesome, master painter, whatever, but for most things it's really not that hard to learn to use an HVLP gun like this and it saves a lot of time on a big job like this one since these things move a lot of paint a lot faster than a rattle can ever could. But like I said, on small things it's honestly just not worth my time to mess with. So uh, anyway, it, uh, it ended up taking me about 7 eighths of a gallon of paint to put down one good coat on this trailer and since I obviously wasn't going to be storing an eighth of a gallon of paint, I just uh, mixed up what was left over and sprayed it on the thinner areas of the previous coat until it was all used up. And uh, that's another thing I really like about this Rust-Oleum paint since it's a uh, Rust-Oleum color and they sell it pretty much anywhere. It's super easy just to buy a can or two for touch up years down the road as that's needed as well. So, in all of its glory, this is the finished trailer, minus a little wiring, but we're still working on that for the next segment. Uh, regardless, I feel like this trailer and everything on it is ridiculously overbuilt. I'd say it weighs somewhere between two and 3,000 pounds empty, although I won't actually know for sure until I get back from the DMV since I'm told they'll need to weigh it, which is fine with me because I kind of want to know anyway, I'm pretty curious. And, uh, and this trailer is honestly everything that I hoped it would be. 
we gotta hit the road. We uh, we gotta take this thing to its first inspection. There's at least two of them. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, so those are working. Yeah, so pretty much I've done uh, a lot of Googling here and talked to a bunch of people. And there's uh, at least two different inspections we gotta do with this thing. Yeah, we got our, and my camera flipped around, so we got these lights on now. The first thing we have to do is take it to, <clears throat> at least in my case, living uh, just outside of Fort Worth, we gotta take it to the local sheriff's office and they uh, will take a look at it and say, yup, it's a trailer, and that it's never been, that it's not a manufactured trailer, it's never had a VIN or anything. Because I guess at one point that was a problem. People used to uh, used to steal trailers and then they just tried to register them as their own or whatever. Yeah, that thing is trailing me perfectly, YouTube. Pun intended. It's also not as wide as I thought it'd be. That's the beautiful thing about deck over trailers. They, uh, you know, you can get a wider bed over the same width of axle. So it's just as difficult or not difficult to drive depending upon how you look at it. But you have another like 18 inches of usable bed space on each side. So, yeah, we are 21 minutes from the, uh, the county sheriff here. And we've got this nice wide open road. That thing is trailing me just incredibly well, YouTube. That thing is staying right back there. It's not moving at all. Some people commented on other videos about, like, why did you put your trailer axles where you did? And, uh, well, it's 60-40 weight distribution, not counting the tongue. So 60% of the bed of the trailer is, um, is in front of the axles and 40% is behind it. So that way you've got a little bit of tongue weight. I don't know how much tongue weight. It should be about 10% loaded if we center the load. That's kind of what we want. All right, I gotta, we're coming up on a stop sign here, so I gotta stop filming and check my, my gypsus. Oh wait, brakes are working. Wow, look at that. All right, so stopping this truck with the trailer behind it is uh, arguably even easier than stopping it without the trailer. That's great. And this turn, you can't really see very far past it. People go fast on this road. Come on, old truck. Yeah. I hope you guys can see this. I'm not watching what I'm filming. I'm just kind of pointing this camera center of the dashboard and hoping for the best because we got us some twisties here and the trailer's doing them just fine. So now we're headed home from that and uh, went really well. Stood and waited in line for like over an hour and there were four or five different people there waiting for VIN inspections. There were a couple of boats and one guy had like this 42 Ford truck or something and uh, a couple other trailers. And uh, yeah, so sat there, waited through all that and I got that little form filled out that they have to fill out. So now what we're doing is driving home and I'm gonna park this trailer and take that form to get a VIN number assigned for the trailer. Then I gotta weld that into the trailer. Then I gotta get the trailer inspected. Then I got to, uh, then, uh, then I get some plates for it. So, first step down, looking pretty good so far. And I got the VIN number generated, it only cost $2, only took like probably 30 minutes. And then I stamped that like six different places into the side of the trailer. I am going to weld it, but legally all I have to do is stamp it, and that's all I had time for that day. We're on the highway, YouTube. First time ever. And it's pulling just as well as it did on the backcountry roads. And we're doing about 70 now, and I can't even tell it's back there. This is, uh, this is everything that I hoped it would be, everybody. So we are on the way to this exit right here which holds a truck stop which is where we're gonna get this thing weighed 
because that's uh, one of the other things that I need to register it. But I got the VIN on there, obviously, and uh, took it to the local uh, mechanics place, the local Jiffy Loop, to have it inspected. Passed with flying colors, needless to say. All right, there's the truck stop. Never had a trailer weighed before, so wish me luck on this. Behold the fruits of my labor. Yeah, so this thing is officially street legal and everything went really well. Uh, I spent a little bit under 110 bucks at the county tax assessor's office, so I'd say all things considered, in terms of actually making this thing street legal, it only cost me about 150 bucks or so, but it did take a solid day. Like I got home from the tax office at like 4.30 and I left my house a little bit after 8.30 that morning because um, you know there's just a lot of stuff that has to be done and there's a lot of lines to wait in. And I'm lucky, I live uh, actually not in Fort Worth, I'm like Fort Worth adjacent. And so, you know, our tax office, there's hardly anyone in there, for instance. If you're in a major city or you're in Austin or something, because I've been through that one, plan on like probably several days to get this done. But I was able to do it in one full day. There's your random rambling video of the day. Thanks for watching, everybody. This was a great build. Yeehaw.